The season is still early. Who will roll the dice and grab the victory here today? It's time for the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is race number three in season number six of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. We are here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway in Las Vegas, Nevada for the Braille Battery 400, a 54 lap race here today around this one and a half mile racetrack. And it begins, I guess you could say, enter the way goes west. Of course, it's a, an abbreviated version of the real thing. We only only go to two racetracks on the West Coast, being Las Vegas and California. Uh, but still, two West Coast races, one here today on Wednesday, and on Saturday morning, go to California. But right now, we got this one here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, a 54 lap race. It's going to be shorter than Monday's race at Atlanta, which means fuel strategy could be a thing here today. Especially considering that the fuel window here in Las Vegas is about five laps shorter than it is at Atlanta for some stupid reason. But uh, you know what? That is not going to take away from this being a very entertaining race. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy here from the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The points coming into today's event. Daniel McMillan is the points leader. He has 77 points towards the championship. But he is not locked into the chase quite yet. However, the guy right behind him, only one point behind him. Blaine Keys is locked into the chase for his win at the Atlanta Motor Speedway on Monday. Isaac Nichols is three points behind. Daytona 500 champion Cameron Garlington is 11 points behind. Garlington is also locked into the chase. And Noah Carr is 11 points behind, driving for Richard Childress Racing. Well, it's only been a two-day gap, but still, I think these guys are fired up and they're ready to get the third race started. Another chase spot on the line for these full-time drivers. And they're going to be racing hard for the win here today. Let's go truck side for the command to fire the engines here in the Braille Battery 400. Gentlemen, start your engine. And a great command there to fire these guys up. I'm ready to get this one started here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. The number 18 of Donovan Dufit will start on the pole position for today's event. Alongside him, it's the Season 2 Chick-fil-A Cup Series champion of Jesse Turner and the number 43, who is still looking for his first points-paying win in this series since Season number 2 at Dover. And by the way, the day I'm recording this, I just came home from Dover uh, watching the Xfinity race. It wasn't the best of races, but, you know, it was still fun to be there anyway. I got my picture with Garrett Sniffley and Harrison Rose. I mean, it was a great day. Anyways, enough about that. Dale Salzman had a very strong outing in Atlanta on Monday and got a strong beginning here at Las Vegas. A third place stunning position for the part-time driver there. Alongside him, Cody Silla, rookie driver in the number one. Row three, Ace Garcia and Jay Jefferson, a couple of rookie drivers this season. Then we got the Daytona 500 champion of Cameron Garlington starting on the inside of Julius Anderson. And it's Marty Johnson, Trey Barto rounding out the top 10 starting positions here for the Braille Battery 400 at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Past winners of this race include Garrett Sonor, Gabriel Wanderlei, and Matt Delio. And uh, Garrett Sonor, the all-time winningest driver, Gabriel Wanderlei, a Daytona 500 champion, and Matt Delio, a Chick-fil-A Cup Series champion. So this race is won by some of the best. The green flag is out. We're racing in the Braille Battery 400 here at Las Vegas.
And on the first lap, Dale Salzman, a part-time driver, will lead the first lap of action. But there goes Jesse Turner driving right by the number 96. And I just said, this race is won by some of the best. Well, it would be very fitting if this guy won. Especially considering the long losing streak that he has. If I'm not mistaken, of all the active drivers in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, he has the longest losing streak in this series. The Season 2 champion, the Season 1 Daytona 500 winner, Jesse Turner is going to lead lap number 2 here in the Braille Battery 400. Ace Garcia for BK Racing currently running in the second position. A rookie driver there and only his fourth ever start here on Napa Fan. Having a great outing for that team. And Dale Salzman also doing another great job. And here comes Cameron Gerlichton, the defending Daytona 500 champion. Number 47. He's up to the fourth position for JTD or JTG Doherty Racing. And now in the Daytona 500, I said it was JTD Doherty Racing. It's JTG Doherty Racing. But uh, hey, I think it was a pretty good Daytona 500 finish. Ace Garcia is going to drive by the number 43 of Jesse Turner for the lead on lap 4 of 54. Dale Salzman back in the mix. You got Marty Johnson here in the top five right now. And then number 32 looking strong there for Go Fast Racing. Michael Kelly, the owner of this team. They got the Meliola Smooth Fest win. And here they are running fifth at Las Vegas. Ace Garcia and the number 23 is going to lead lap number four here at Las Vegas. I'm going to look back to uh, some of the other part-time drivers. And one owner I have actually yet to mention this season is John Gilbert, the owner of this uh, Beard Motorsports team, and William Johnson, the driver. I would like to apologize to him for not mentioning him in qualifying. I actually forgot to write it down on my sheet of paper, and then I went and looked, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I forgot about John Gilbert and Beard Motorsports. But, hey, a shout-out to those guys. Um, they started on the outside pole for the Daytona 500. They did not race at Atlanta, but uh, here they are at Las Vegas. Not doing too bad. I believe they're in the top 20 right now in that number 75. William Johnson doing a pretty decent job. Ace Garcia pulling away from the rest of the field right now. As these guys battle for second place. Adam Lewis in the number 22 battling with Cameron Gurlington and Marty Johnson. The number 32 having a very strong outing here today. And he's going to get to the inside of Cameron Gurlington and take second. But Garcia is out of here right now in the number 23. But remember, those pit stops definitely shake the field up here, and it looks like we had an issue. Air Jalarv and Alonzo and Stuart Gratton are down the pit lane. I'm wondering if that was an incident on the racetrack. Either that or Air Jalarv and Alonzo did not start. No, something happened to Alonzo and Gratton. Um, but I do not believe the caution lights were triggered. Trying to see, they were not. So it looks like we might have had a crash between these two guys, yet it did not trigger a caution. There actually is a gap back in here uh, from the number 13 of Eli Bright to the number 34 of Al Legacy. And I can assure you that the cautions are on. I haven't done anything, haven't changed anything. So it's the way it is sometimes. If they are not on the racing surface sideways or stopped on the racing surface, then the caution lights will not be triggered. So. That must have been the case between Alonzo and Gratton early on in this one. We're going to keep on racing here in the Braille Battery 400. It's Ace Garcia, Marty Johnson, Cameron Gurlington, the Daytona 500 champion back in season number four. Gabriel Wonderlay won the Daytona 500. And this race, Cameron Gurlington might do the same in the number 47. I mean, he has nothing to lose. He can go ahead and gamble for that win as much as he wants. And uh, this is the best place to gamble, Las Vegas. Of course, with Garlington, he's already locked into the chase, so he can race these regular season races at ease. But uh, it doesn't look he's doesn't look like he's doing that. Up to the third position here at Las Vegas, looking very strong for that race team. Marty Johnson's going to get a run to the inside. He attempted to get a run to the inside of Ace Garcia, was not able to do so, and Garcia is going to stay out front. Trying to become the first rookie winner this season in a points race. We had Cameron Garlington and Blaine Keyes win. Both of those guys, veteran drivers to the series. Ace Garcia is a rookie to the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Looking to grab his first career win on Napa Fan and only his fourth ever start. Garlington's going to get around the 32 of Marty Johnson for the second position. And Cameron Garlington up to the second position here at Las Vegas. Looking very strong here in the Braille Battery 400. Pole sitter Donovan Dufit has yet to lead a lap in this race, but he is running in the fourth position. Jesse Turner, the outside pole sitter, running in the fifth position. Then it's Jordan Lopez. How about Matt Dalio, the defending winner of this race in the number 88? Into the wall hard goes the 88 with Isaac Nichols. And how about that? 
right as I was talking about him and another hard impact as Al Legacy and Colin Driver came in there hard. That was an unfortunate one there. And the caution's going to come out here on lap 12 of 54 in the Braille Battery 400. At least it should be coming out, and it is. There is the pace car. I mean, how in the world? I don't think Jesse Turner was involved, but he is down the pit lane for some, some reason. It was Matt Delio and Isaac Nichols. They were running in the top 10 at the time. Matt Delio, the defending winner of this race right and I mean just like as exact as I got to him he crashes and it's not going to be back-to-back -back Las Vegas wins for the season four champion and Al Legacy came in there and Arca breaked into that Daniel McMillan the points leader also involved I'm wondering if Jesse Turner came down the pit lane knowing that caution was out or was going to come out Trying to get some strategy because nothing looks wrong on his car. It looks like his car is perfectly fine. Anyways, the rest of the field is down. They were led by Ace Garcia. You see McMillan. He's going to be done for the day in the number 95. There's Garcia in the number 23. We'll see where he comes out in relation to everybody else. And it does appear that Ace Garcia will win the race off of the pit lane with Marty Johnson second. Cameron Garlington is going to be third, I do believe. I'm um, not sure if Jefferson beat out Lopez or not. I believe Jordan Lopez is going to go to that fourth position exiting the pit lane. Looks like Reagan Whitlock was also involved. We had that second pack, and uh, Noah Cars it was only 11 points behind coming into this race. He's got major damage. Colin Driver, a part-time driver for Premium Motorsports, also involved. Zach Ryan, the owner of that team. That's the only car Premium has in this race right now. Matthew Phillips, the owner of RCR. And uh, that's an unfortunate one. Daniel Bouchard for Joe Gibbs Racing. And Stuart Haas Racing with Zachary Fitzwater. It was a lot bigger of a crash than we thought. We might have actually had another crash. It might not have just been the Matt Delio incident. So we're going to go ahead and see what happened. Ace Garcia is the leader here in the Braille Battery 400. We'll see what he does on the restart. But first, of course, we've got to review the crashes that happened here in this race at Las Vegas. First of all, we're going to replay what happened in real time to Alonzo and Grattan. Their incidents were unrelated, by the way. Um, Grattan, a little more understandable than this one. I've seen things like this happen before, specifically at Talladega. Just watch and see what uh, Alonzo does here. I think it's about lap 6, lap 7 of the race. He's deep in the field. And... You quote that one. I don't know how to explain what happened there. Um, I, I just don't know. I just have no clue. As for Stuart Gratton, the number 37 ended up blowing up. Or not blowing up, but something went amiss on the 37. Gratton did actually get back out into the racetrack. But you see, through the corner here, I think he tries to make it to the pit lane. I think something's wrong. He can't make it to the pit lane, or he actually does make it to the pit lane. Excuse me there. That's why we got the gap that we did. Uh, so Grattan just simply came down the pit lane um, for some sort of issue on his number 37. Uh, but Alonzo, I, I don't know how to explain that one. Um, but that's what happened to the number 10, and that's what happened to the number 37. Let's go ahead and review the crash with Matt Dalio. And this is what happened to the Hendrick Motorsports driver and the BK Racing driver, Matt Dalio and Isaac Nichols. I just don't know if Dalio knew that Nichols was to his outside, did not have him cleared, and the defending winner of the Braille Battery 400 into the outside wall hard. And uh, you see all these guys coming towards this 88. Now this pack avoids them, but this 88, he is in no control of his race cars at this point. And you're going to see the number 34 and the number 55 arc to break right into him. Of course, there really wasn't much they could do. They could have slowed down, but Al Legacy right into the ADA. Then into Colin Driver, the number 95 of Daniel McMillan also involved. You see Reagan Whitlock with damage. Zachary Fitzwater behind this one. Daniel Bouchard and Noah Cars also get caught up. I think Alexander Rowe actually avoided this one in the 27. Which is miraculous, because he was the only driver in that pack that avoided it. But Dalio is destroyed. McMillan, Legacy, Driver, Cars. A lot of good drivers, a lot of good cars. 
torn up in this one, and uh, it's just unfortunate to see that incident happen. Going to replay this one in real time. And the only thing I can think of is that Dalio did not know Nichols was to his outside, and uh, Dalio unfortunately got the worst of it. Hard impact from Al Legacy. Daniel McMillan and Colin Driver. And uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes here at Las Vegas. I believe those were the only guys involved, but it's still very tough to see the defending winner of this race have as struggling of a season as he's had. Three races in the garage. Well, actually, three races of crash damage. He was not in the garage at Atlanta, but three races involved in the crash for Matt Delio. He's just hoping he can turn around. The season four champion not having the best of seasons here in season number six. Anyways, we're going to go take a quick commercial break. Then we'll be right back here to the Braille Battery 400 at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Ace Garcia, the rookie driver, leads the field here at Las Vegas. Back here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and for the first time this season, we're going to have lap down cars in the inside lane. That's Herr Gillard and Alonzo and Stuart Gratton. You saw the issues they had. Some of them unexplainable, but uh, they're back out onto the racetrack, but a lap down. I'm going to be starting on the inside lane here. It's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Ace Garcia is the leader, and it's the Daytona 500 champion of Cameron Gurlington running in the second position. Marty Johnson runs in third. Jay Jefferson runs in the fourth position. Jordan Lopez, Cody Sill, Adam Lewis, Caleb Hoffman. His final Las Vegas race in his retirement season looking pretty good. Now Tyler Seldman, his last ever win on Napa Fan, came at this racetrack. Might see that number 14 do the same. Atlanta winner Blaine Keyes, Ryan Madden, I think is about the top 10. You see Garrett Tenor, the season three winner of this race, back in there running either 11th or 12th. Green flag is back in the air. We're racing once again in the Braille Battery 400. You see Alonzo peek to the outside of Cameron Gurlington. I believe Alonzo and Gretton have very well running race cars, but they are a lap down. That's great news for Ace Garcia. He's got two lap cars in between him and second place right now, and both of them are very fast. Jay Jefferson looking to the inside of Cameron Gurlington for the second position. The number 31 is going to do so for RCR. Now two of their cars for RCR uh, were involved in that crash. Noah Cars and Alexander Rowe with minor damage. Uh, but they got one driver running pretty well right now, and that's the number 31 of Jay Jefferson. He's going to lose second, I do believe, to Jordan Lopez in the number 17. And how about these rookies? They're 1, 2, 3 right now here at Las Vegas. Marty Johnson. I can tell you that Marty Johnson's upset about that Daytona 500. He had a chance of winning that thing. He wants to get some redemption, get into the chase. And here he is with a great chance of doing so. Winning this race is a possibility for this team. Running in the fourth position right now, Marty Johnson in the number 32. And another rookie, Adam Lewis, running in the fifth position for Team Penske. Cody Smart, the owner of that team. As for Garcia, he's out of here right now, the number 23. Now, his teammate, Isaac Nichols, was involved in that crash. But uh, BK Racing looking pretty strong right now. And the number 23 doing a fantastic job. He's led the most laps so far here in the Braille Battery, four, Braille Battery 400. Lap 18 of 54 in this race. Jay Jefferson, Marty Johnson, Adam Lewis on this inside lane here. They're trying to get around Stuart Gretton, who is a lap down. They're going to easily do so, but they're going to go three wide in attempting to do so. However, I believe they're going to get around the 37 cleanly, so that's a good thing there. But uh, it's going to take a while for any of these guys to catch up to Ace Garcia because he still has one lap car in between him and second place, and he's got about a second on second place as well. But it's Garcia, Jefferson, Lewis, Marty Johnson, and Blaine Keyes, the Atlanta winner, looking to go two in a row here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Atlanta was his first career win in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series back on Monday. And he's looking to get his second win in this series right after his first one. And here's Garrett Sonor, number six. Had a pretty quiet season up to this point. Of course, there were only two races in. But uh, he knows how to win here in Las Vegas, and he's in the top ten right now. You better be careful. 
of Stuart Gratton there. Gratton almost got into him, but fortunately that did not happen. Garrett Zanor running in the seventh position right now. There's Cameron Garlington in the number 47. He's fallen back to eighth. Hoffman is right now 10th. Chris Skinlart taking the ninth position for Wood Brothers Racing. It's a half a second lead right now for Ace Garcia in the number 23. We've had one set of pit stops, and if this thing stays green to the end like it did at Atlanta, it could get a little interesting for the finish of this one. But Jay Jefferson in number 31, he's finally going to get around here to Larvin Alonzo, and Jefferson is now going to have his eye set on the number 23 for this lead. Adam Lewis running in the third position, but not for long. Here comes Blaine Keyes in the number 48. Fresh off his Atlanta victory, looking to go two in a row in this series. Is up to the third position for Hendrick Motorsports. And Marty Johnson also looking like a strong driver in this race. He's still in the top five right now. He's going to get to the inside of Adam Lewis for the fourth position and possibly take that position away. C.J. Jefferson right behind the number 23 of Ace Garcia. Garcia still out front. He has led every single lap in this green flag run so far. And that BK Racing team with Ace Garcia looking very strong here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Alonzo in the number 10, a lap down. He's going to be passed by Blaine Keyes. Now Keyes is going to have his eyes set on Jay Jefferson. I believe this 48's going pretty fast right now here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. That team has figured something out this season, I do believe. They were running up front in the Daytona 500, but just the luck and chance of that race, he did fall back. He won Atlanta on Monday, and here he is running third at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And he's got a good chance of getting a second win of the season and only the third race of the season here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series, season number six. Marty Johnson runs in the fourth position. Jordan Lopez is up to the fifth position. And Garrett Zanor, Lopez's teammate, is sixth. We've had another caution on the racetrack. Isaac Nichols and Stuart Gratton involved in this one. This time, I believe everybody's going to avoid the car's on the racetrack, but I believe they might be the only two. No, Anthony Lopez also involved in the number 72. Now, both Nichols and Gratton have had incidents here today already. They're racing back to the line, and Ace Garcia is going to win it back. But that's an unfortunate one for both of those Aussie drivers there. And it uh, doesn't look like today's going to end too well for Stuart Gratton or Isaac Nichols as they both get involved in the crash on lap 25 of the Braille Battery 400. Well, another perfect opportunity to go down the pit lane for service. Ace Garcia will lead the field down the pit lane with Jay Jefferson, Blaine Keyes, Alonzo's a lap down, but Marty Johnson currently running in the fourth position. And you got the Roush Fenway teammates here. Luke Rainey, the owner of this team, with a great chance of moving their way up in the owner's points. Fifth and sixth right now. Between Jordan Lopez and Garrett Sonora. Both of those guys are very good drivers, and they're definitely showing it here today at Las Vegas. Anyways, Ace Garcia going to lead the field down the pit lane once again. Garcia has definitely led the most laps in this race, but unfortunately for his teammate Isaac Nichols, his day is going to be done. <coughs> We're going to follow with Ace Garcia, and this is happening just before the halfway mark of this race, so things could get very interesting near the end of this one. But though everything should work out for it being one more stop to the finish of this race. That's how it should be, but it might not necessarily be that way. Now, if we go green, that's probably how it's going to be. And Ace Garcia, a very slow pit stop on the number 23. He's going to lose the lead, and Jay Jefferson has won the race off of the pit lane. Jay Jefferson's going to lead the field with a green flag. When we restart here in the Braille Battery 400, Blaine Keys second. Alonzo will lap down, but uh, he's going to start in the inside lane no matter what. Marty Johnson's going to be third. Jordan Lopez and Garrett Zanor round out the top five. Then it's Cameron Garlington and I believe Ace Garcia. No, Trey Barto is actually in that position right there. I believe that is the seventh position. Eighth, ninth, and tenth place for Ace Garcia. He lost nine spots on the pit lane. He's been the dominant guy of the day, but that might very well lose him the race here at Las Vegas. Julius Anderson up to ninth, Adam Lewis in eighth. But it's Jay Jefferson leading the field right now here in the Braille Battery 400. He's going to lead it to halfway point of the race. 
And we will get to the restart, but first, let's review the crash between Stuart Gratton and Isaac Nichols. Stuart Gratton might have had an issue, and he was a little bit slower than these lead lap cars. He's three wide, exiting turn four. Caleb Hoffman to his inside, pushes him into the outside wall. Hoffman gets a piece of this one. Eli Bright's going to smack that 37 hard. And Eli Bright, I believe his day is going to be done after that one. You see Anthony Lopez in the number 72. He's also going to get involved. John R. Donovan Duthit avoid this one. The 72 doesn't. But I think the hardest hit is Isaac Nichols running right into that number 37. The second crash of the day for Isaac Nichols in that number 83 team. And that's a tough one for Nichols. He came into this race only three points behind Daniel McMillan. Now, he might actually surpass Daniel McMillan in the points, but he's definitely not going to be the points leader exiting this race uh, with a DNF here at Las Vegas. And, of course, Stuart Gretton involved in the crash yet again. I, I just don't know anymore. But, hey, you know what? It's still a long season, and one win gets you into the chase. Let me just tell you that. 13 races left. Stuart Gratton, he's capable of doing so. He did it last year, and he could do it again this year. That's a tough break for those guys involved, especially Eli Bright did not notice that he was involved in that one. And you see the damage to his race car, number 13, Hoffman with minimal damage. Um, might have been a little bit of an extended pit stop for the number 14 team. He might fall back. And Anthony Lopez as well, also involved. I don't believe Lopez will be able to continue in this race. Replay of this one in real time following Stuart Gratton. And it's just not that good of a day for the number 37. He had an issue early on, came down the pit lane, went a lap down, and it just got worse from there. Tough break for Isaac Nichols, Stuart Grant, Anthony Lopez, Eli Bright. I think they're all going to get knocked out from this crash, but that's just the way racing goes. We'll go on board, Stuart Grant, and then we'll get to a commercial break, and then to the race here in the Braille Battery 400. On board, the number 37 of Stuart Gratton for this incident. It's not a pretty one. Um, just hang on tight. And I think when that 83 came in and hit that 37 right where the engine is, that ended Stuart Gretton's day, and uh, it will, unfortunately, for the number 37. But uh, like I said, it's a long season, and all you need to do is win a race, and you're in the chase. So not over yet for any of these guys involved in this crash. We'll be right back after this commercial break from the Las Vegas Motor Speedway, then we'll return for the restart here in the Braille Battery 400. Like a seasoned driver behind the wheel, Hearst chips take you from caution flag levels of hunger to checkered flag feelings of satisfaction. When it comes to race day snacks, the signature crunch and endless flavors of Hearst leaves the competition in a pile of chip dust. Don't settle for anything less than the champions of the chip aisle. Hearst, forever good. Available at Menards. Back here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the Braille Battery 400. And we're past the halfway point of this race. We got one car on the inside this time. That's Air Gel Arvin Alonzo in the number 10. It's Jay Jefferson leading the field in the number 31. And after his flip at Daytona, that's turned around pretty well for him here at Las Vegas. He's leading the field right now. Atlanta winner Blaine Keyes runs in the second position. Marty Johnson in the third position. Jordan Lopez, Garrett Senor running in the fifth position. The winner of this race in season number three, Cameron Grillington to the Daytona 500 champion, Trey Barto, Adam Lewis, and Julius Anderson, along with Ace Garcia, the top 10 coming to the restart here at Las Vegas. They're going to begin lap 30 of 54. It's going to be 25 laps to go. And the green flag is back in the air here in the Braille Battery 400. Now Alonzo on that inside lane He's got a pretty fast race car, and he might very well open up the door for Marty Johnson in the number 32 to get to the inside of the 31 of Jay Jefferson for this lead. The number 32 to the inside, he's got a nose on the 31. Will he push the number 10 around him? We're actually gonna go three wide off the corner. Blaine Keyes in number 48 could have kept it three wide, but he didn't, he fell back, and Jay Jefferson somehow, some way. He's going to stay out front. He's going to try to get around Alonzo. He clears Marty Johnson. And that is some great driving there by the rookie driver of Jay Jefferson. Getting around the 10 and keeping the 32 behind him. But don't look now. Here comes Garrett Sonor in the number 6. 
looking for his 19th career win on Napa Fan and his seventh in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series and his second here at Las Vegas in the Braille Battery 400. He's going to push Marty Johnson around the 10 eventually, I do believe, but Alonzo does have a fast race car on this outside lane, and he's making it work, and that's Stuart Haas Racing Machine. Iker Barreto, the owner of Stuart Haas Racing, not the best of races for him today, but uh, they do have Trey Barter running in the top 10, so not all too bad for the Stuart Haas Racing team. Jay Jefferson checking out right now in the number 31, but Garrett Tenor is looking to take the second position, and you know this man is hungry for a win. He went winless in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series in season number five. He has not won in over two seasons. But he's three wide right now for the second position. He's got Cameron Garlington, the Daytona 500 champion, to his inside, and Garlington's gonna drive right by the number six with help from Adam Lewis. They're three wide once again. Alonzo back in the mix in all this, and these guys better be careful entering turn number three. They're still three wide. Lane Keyes is gonna keep it three wide, or is he? No, he won't. I think they're gonna remain two wide here at Las Vegas, so we're going to avoid crashing yet again, but Garrett Sonor falling back in the number six. He got shuffled at a line. An issue with Derek Campbell in the number seven. And the part-time driver with an issue. He goes down to the apron. I'm not sure if this is going to trigger the caution or not, but something amiss on the Tommy Baldwin racing machine. Clint Buchanan, the owner of this team. It does not appear that today is going to be the best of days for him. And, uh, we got another caution on the racetrack because another crash has happened. Tristan Allen and Richard Kinghart around in turn number four. And Noah Carr has also kind of got sideswiped in number three. I think the lead has changed as well, and Cameron Garlington is now out front in the number 47. I'm wondering if that was a result of what happened to Derek Hamill and them reacting to it. I don't even see Jay Jefferson. He's down the seventh. If he's even down that far. Elijah Gordon's in the mix in all this, but I think Elijah Gordon's a lap down. Yeah, Elijah Gordon's a lap down for some reason in the number five. Got a lot to review. Um, after that one, Derek Hamill blowing up. And then Richard Kinghart and Tristan Allen going around in turn number four. And then the Daytona 500 champion of Cameron Gurlington taking the lead away from Jay Jefferson. And Jefferson falling back. A lot happened in that lap. Let me tell you that much. We're going to follow with the Daytona 500 champion of Cameron Garlington and see where he falls in relation to everybody else on this pit stop. Garlington with a great chance at winning today's race and getting his second win of the season. And even Blaine Keyes, I believe he is uh, still up there, and he is running 13th right now. He's got a chance of winning this race. Both Garlington and Keyes have a chance at getting their second win of the season and only the third race of the season. So... Those guys definitely showing a lot of strength and uh, a lot of strength on the pit lane there for Cameron Garlington who wins the race off of the pit lane. Julius Anderson going to be second. Garrett Sonor might have gotten third. A great pit stop for the number 16. You got to hand it to this Roush Fenway organization. Luke Rainey definitely is happy with the result of this team running third and fourth right now. Jordan Lopez, I think that is Adam. No, that's Lane Keys. I was guessing that was Adam Lewis because he was up there. He was second coming into the pit lane. Adam Lewis falls back in the number 22. Ace Garcia moved up in the number 23. Barto and Keys kind of staying in the top 10 right there. And it's Garlington who will lead the field to the third restart of the day here in the Braille Battery 400. But first, we're gonna go ahead and review the crash that happened just a couple laps ago here at Las Vegas. This was a very eventful lap here. I think it was about lap 35 of the race. Derek Hamill blows up. Then these guys go three wide in the turn number three. Richard King, Artris, and Ellen, and that is Ricky Stevenson on the inside. They actually go four wide for a moment, but Kinghart and Allen cannot save it. Um, into the outside wall they go and around. And that's why the caution is out. But on top of that, Jay Jefferson got stuck behind Elijah Gordon while leading this race. And I think he lost six positions because of it. Elijah Gordon had an issue in the number five as well. He held up the leader. That's why Garlington ended up winning the race back to the line in the number 47. And that's why Jefferson fell back. And you see the 31. He almost gets spun as he tries to get around the five of Elijah Gordon. Jordan Lopez is coming in the number 17. Just a very eventful lap here 
And uh, the caution is back out, and these guys have time to regroup yet again here in the Braille Battery 400. And this is what happened here, three wide in turn number three and turn number four. It just doesn't work. And uh, those guys into the outside wall hard. Retro King Art, Tristan Allen. But they will not be knocked out from that incident. You see Noah Cars come in there and uh, gain some more damage. But uh, those guys will still be able to continue. But they could get in the way of our leaders, just like Elijah Gordon got in the way of Jay Jefferson. Uh, so, yeah, it's Cameron Garlington now out front in the number 47. He's looking strong. We'll just see if he can get the victory here in the Braille Battery 400. We're not going to go to a commercial break. So let's get to the restart here at Las Vegas right now. This thing has the potential to get very crazy because we got Elijah Gordon who held up our leader there coming to the line under that caution. Um, Elijah Gordon there in that inside lane. He's got a really slow race car. And Derek Hamill is actually back out there on the racetrack after having an issue and stopping on the racetrack. Not sure what his capability is, but both all three of these guys on that inside lane, they're a lap down, so they could get in the way of our leaders. But it's Cameron Garlington out front. Julius Anderson, the season three winner of this race. Garrett Sonor running in the third position. Jordan Lopez, his teammate for Roush Fenway Racing. A strong race for those guys. Blaine Keys, Trey Barto, Ace Garcia, Adam Lewis, Dale Salzman back in the top 10, and Chris Skinlard, I believe, rounds out the top 10. Coming to the restart here in the Braille Battery 400. It's lap 38 of 54. Now lap 39 of 54 here at Las Vegas. And it's a 16 lap to go race here in the Braille Battery 400. And Garlington is gonna be pulling away here. Now Blaine Keys taking advantage of this inside lane. Elijah Gordon does not seem to be going as slow as he did when that caution came out. So that's good news for Blaine Keyes, who's going to get to the inside of Julius Anderson and take the second position away, or at least attempt to do so. But Cameron Gerlington has all this lap traffic in between him and second place right now, and it's looking good for the number 47. Now, here's the big question. I said that this could come or could turn into a fuel strategy race. The guys came in, I think, about lap 37. I said that the fuel window here is about 15 laps. With the caution flags, they could possibly make it to the end without making another stop. It's possible. And look at this. The three lap down cars are three wide right now. That could definitely get interesting. Number five, Elijah Gordon's going to push Alonzo up the racetrack. That's going to open the door for Blaine Keys, who is Elijah Gordon's teammate, by the way. In Hendrick Motorsports, uh... Working together there to get that number 48 of Blaine Keys running in the second position. How about this? The first two winners of the season are 1-2 right now here at Las Vegas. Cameron Garlington and Blaine Keys. But Ace Garcia, Adam Lewis, Chris Skinlar, three rookies here who want to change all of that. Garcia is back up to third after he dominated the early part of this race. In a lap 32 of fit or lap 42 of 54. He's up to the third position for BK Racing. Adam Lewis, a great run for the rookie driver there in the number 22. Chris Skinlark doing a good job. And where did he come from? Matt Tuck. He's up to the sixth position right now. His teammate Cody Sills right behind him. But the Roush guys were doing good. How about Fisher G and those Chip Ganassi racing machines? They're running each other in the top ten. But it's still Cameron Garlington. However, Blaine Keys has gotten around Derek Hamill. There are no lap traffic in between the 47 and the 48 right now. There are no lap cars in between these two drivers. And now there aren't any lap cars in between Blaine Keys and Ace Garcia. And Ace Garcia and Adam Lewis. So it's going to be a four-car battle with no lap cars in between. It could get very interesting. Matt Tuck in the number 42 right behind Chris Skinlart with a chance to strike for that position. But, but here's the big thing. I mean, we're going to probably run into pit stops late in the going if we do not get another caution in this race. And uh, that could very well determine the winner. But Garlington out front. Blaine Key second. Ace Garcia, Adam Lewis, and Chris Skinlark the top five. Matt Tuck running in the sixth position. Here comes Jay Jefferson. He got stuck behind Elijah Gordon um, during that last caution. He lost the lead. He fell back. He's up to seventh. He still has a chance. And how about rookie Cody Sill? And Jesse Turner is back up in the mix in the number 43 running ninth. How about that for Turner? He started on the outside pole. He fell back, but he's back up front. Marty Johnson also running up front once again in the top ten. Our pole sitter not doing too bad either. Number 18 running 12th. 
Back up front, we might have a battle here for the lead, and we do. It's a four-car battle for the lead between Garlington, Keys, Garcia, and Lewis. But right now, it's the first two winners of the season running 1-2 with a chance of getting chance of each getting their second win of the season here today. These two guys have been phenomenal so far here in season number six. The Daytona 500 champion and the winner at Atlanta on Monday. And they're battling for this lead late in the going with 10 laps to go in the Braille Battery 400. Blaine Keys trying to get to the inside of Cameron Garlington for the lead. You know what? He's going to get a run to the inside of him. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to make the pass stick, but he's going to try. Blaine Keys to the inside of Cameron Garlington for the lead. Adam Lewis up the third. He's gotten around Ace Garcia, and Keys is around the 47, and Garcia and Lewis might get around the 47 of Cameron Garlington. Let's not count out Skinlart or Matt Tuck or even Jay Jefferson in this one. Matt Tuck, the dark horse for this race, he came out of nowhere to get that sixth finish or that sixth running position right now, and he's got a chance at getting an even better finish in this race. But it's Blaine Keyes trying to go two in a row here in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. He's leading the field in the number 48 with less than 10 laps to go. As a matter of fact, it's seven laps to go here in the Braille Battery 400. Ace Garcia to the inside of Adam Lewis for the second position. Cameron Gurlington, Chris Skillart, Matt Tuck. Let's not forget about these guys being able to make it to the end. They might not necessarily be able to. How about Matt Tuck? This 42 is going to go for third. He's three wide to the inside of Gurlington and Lewis, but he's not going to be able to get to the inside of the 47. He's going to get around Lewis, but I don't know if he's going to get around Gurlington. He's going to stay in the fourth position right now, and Matt Tuck trying to grab his second career Chick-fil-A Cup Series victory. Currently runs in the fourth position, but he did not get through that corner very well, and he's still battling with Lewis for the fourth position. It might be a three-car race now between Keys, Garcia, and Garlington if you want to count out, count out the pit stops, but those pit stops might still happen. Blaine Keys leads lap 49 here at Las Vegas. It is five laps to go in the Braille Battery 400. Is anybody back in here coming down the pit lane? No, not yet, but it's still five laps to go. I don't know if these guys can make it to the end. Ace Garcia running in the second position. He's been the more dominant guy at this race, especially early on in this one. He would love to get his first ever win on Napa Fan and it be in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. But Matt Tuck in the 42, you know, he's come from behind to get all the way up to this point. He doesn't want to stop. Cameron Garlington, the Daytona 500 champion, wants to get his second win of the season. And same with Blaine Keyes after winning his first career Chick-fil-A Cup Series race. He wants to go back to victory lane two races in a row. Three and a half laps to go in the Braille Battery 400 and Blaine Keyes is out front in the number 48. They are still driving by the pit lane. And everybody is driving by the pit lane. So my assumption is that these guys, they should be able to make it to the end without having to come in again. But still, I could be wrong. You know how fuel strategy is in these races. I never get it right. Ace Garcia in the number 23 looking to get a late pass on the number 48 to get this win possibly. And the BK Racing team cheering on this number 23. Their other driver got crashed out. But uh, Ace Garcia, the rookie driver, trying to get around to the 48 of Blaine Keys. He's going to get some help from Cameron Gurlington and get a run to the inside with two laps to go. Let's not count out Cameron Gurlington either. This number 47 wants to get his second win of the season, but we're side by side for the lead with one and a half laps to go at Las Vegas. Ace Garcia, Blaine Keys, they're going to be side by side off the corner. Matt Tuck closing in. Cameron Gurlington still with a chance. But I think it's going to be between the 23 and the 48. Only unless these guys come down the pit lane this lap. And you know what? That is exactly what they're doing. They're all coming down or not. They're not all coming down. And Matt Tuck's going to take the white flag here in Las Vegas. Here comes Chris Skinlord in the 21 to the inside. I knew it. I knew it was going to happen. I just knew it was going to happen. This one is not going to go to the guys who we thought were going to win. It's either going to be Chris Skinlart or Cody Sill in the number one. Sill to the inside of Chris Skinlart for the lead on the final lap. Will these guys come down the pit lane? No, they won't. Chris Skinlart trying to get the run on the outside. Cody Sill to his inside. Cody Sill wins the Braille Battery 400 here at Las Vegas. Number one is number one here today in the Braille Battery 400. How about that?
They could not make it to the end. You see Ace Garcia coming off the race, or coming off the pit lane. Cameron Garlington coming off the pit lane. Blaine Keyes coming off the pit lane. They were all leading late in the going. They could not make it to the end without having to make another stop. Matt Tuck actually took the white flag, but it was his teammate who got the win. And Cody Sill surprises us all and wins the Braille Battery 400 here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. How about that for a finish of this crazy race here in the Diamond at the Desert? Or actually, it's the Diamond in the Desert, but still. One wild finish to this Las Vegas race in the Chick-fil-A Cup Series in Cody Sill. I'm pretty sure that is Cody Sill's first career win on Napa Fan. And uh, you know what? That number one's going to be in the chase for season number six of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Cody Sill the winner. Chris Skinlart almost won it. He could not hold off the number one at the end. Adam Lewis, Matt Tuck, Jesse Turner rounds out the top five. Been a topsy-turvy race for him. And our pole sitter, Donovan Duthit, finished in the sixth position. Jordan Lopez, Ricky Stevenson, Garrett Sonor, and Caleb Hoffman, the top ten here at Las Vegas. And a great run for all of those guys. But you see Cameron Garlington, Blaine Keys back in there. They could not make it to the end. And uh, just uh, created a very interesting race here at Las Vegas with a rookie driver in victory lane for the Braille Battery 400. We'll take a look at the rest of the results. Had a few crashes in this one. Alonzo, Bright, Lopez. I'm actually not sure where Alonzo got involved. But I do know that Bright, Lopez, Gratton, and Nichols were all involved in that crash in the second caution of this race. Matt Dalio, McMillan, and Legacy all got knocked out in the first caution of the race. And it's an unfortunate one for those guys, but uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. And Cody Sill surprises us all with his shock win at Las Vegas on Fuel Strategy. The number one in victory lane here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It got very interesting at the end of that one. And how about that Chip Ganassi Racing team? Very solid in this race. A first and a fourth place finish for those guys of Cody Sill and Matt Tuck. Matt Tuck almost won this race. He took the white flag. But Skinlar passed him instantly. And then Cody Sill was drafting that 21. And Cody Sill got to the inside of him and took the victory away from the Wood Brothers Racing Driver. But anyways, next race is going to be at the California Speedway on Saturday morning. The Napa Auto Parts 400. A 40-lap race there around that two-mile racetrack. If this race was crazy, that one might be crazy as well. We've seen Fuel Strategy play out there at California. We might see it again on Saturday morning. Anyways, thank you guys very much for watching. Congratulations to Cody Sill, the winner here at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. And here are the point standings for Season 6 of the Chick-fil-A Cup Series. Thank you guys very much for watching once again. And I will see you guys later. Like a rocket up into the sky Nothing can stop me tonight You made me feel